Now that we have understood how the key derivation uh, is occurring when we have an X2 network, we'll take the same example network that we had in the previous lecture, but in the loss between E node B1 and 2, we will assume that there is no X2 interface and hence the handover has to be an S1 handover. And we will assume here that we have a single MME, we don't change MME. Um, we have a call flows that we'll go in where we do change MMEs, but for conceptual purposes, let's assume that we have one MME. And the mobile has anyway moved up to this sector uh, one zero that we had oh, sorry one one that we had said and now it's going to do it's it will have to be handed over to this sector to zero using an s1 handover right so during an s1 handover what happens is that the source e node b goes ahead and tells the mme hey i require a handover and i don't have an x2 so it goes ahead tells the mme please hand over this mobile to this target E node B and the target cell. So it provides a cell ID for, for this, for this uh, E node B. Once the handover command comes in, the MME derives a new next hop parameter and it goes ahead and computes the next hop parameter using the KSME and NH2 to come up with NH3. And in the handover request command, it provides this uh, tuple NH3 and NCC uh, and <coughs> NCC set to 3 to the E node B2 and it basically this is a new pair that has come into to, to the E node B. The E node B sends a handover command which gets relayed via the MME back through the E node B1 to the mobile and that handover command essentially says that NCC3 is going to be used. Up to here, the NCC in the mobile is, is set to 2 because that's what it had used to derive KE node B11. So with this NCC being set to 3, the mobile knows that it needs to do a vertical derivation of the key when it goes into this sector 21. So when the mobile does move into the sector 21, it uses NH3 along with the target PCI and the downlink frequency index to come up with KE node B20. And that is based on a vertical key derivation. And this key is now cannot be um, cannot be derived by E node B1 because E node B1 cannot derive NH3 because the NH3 derivation from NH2 requires KSME, right? So <clears throat> with this, there is complete security from uh, in, in the target E node B2 that E node B1 could not cannot look into or cannot decode the communication that is happening at the access stratum between the mobile and E node B2. So, so this is the key derivation that happens once if you're using S1. So the very, the very S1 handover, the very first handover using S1 results in a vertical key derivation. And then the next handover is a horizontal key derivation because once the NH has been used already. The rule is you cannot use the NH for uh, again in any in any key derivation, and then you end up doing horizontal key derivation. So this is the difference between an X2 handover and an S1 handover. That in an S1 handover, it's a vertical key derivation that 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 is happening at at the handover, whereas in X2, because the communication happens on X2 before and the keys are already derived by the time the path switch comes back, you can only use it for the subsequent handover.